That didn't really have anything to do with this. I just wanted to fly my drone. certainly does. Hello my friends and welcome to Tom's Tinkering and Adventures. Today we're going to uh, work on something that I have put off for way too long. Oh look at how crooked my head is. There we go. Um, <laughs> the front forks on my Yamaha Super Tenere. These things started leaking during my Alaska trip last year um, after riding on the Dempster Highway which is about a thousand miles round trip maybe a little bit more of gravel. Canada also likes to use this, um, I can't remember the name of it now, calcium chloride or something they put on the gravel roads to keep the dust down and that causes the dirt to stick to everything and it's kind of a little bit corrosive. But uh, I had a little bit of leaking on my fork seals after that. I've done some uh, little fixes to kind of keep it going but it's time to get this thing done and over with. This one doesn't leak in it as much, but uh, the bike could probably use it anyway. And then I am going to also install some seal savers on there. I'll show you what those look like, which should prevent this from happening again. So the first thing you want to do is put your motorcycle up on your center stand. Um, I am going to probably throw something heavy back here in the box to put the um, back wheel down and get the front wheel up. But also what I'm gonna do is I am going to hook a ratcheting tie-down strap or just a regular tie-down strap to my rafters and then here just to keep the front end up. So I'm gonna do both. Well, actually I might just do that. And another safety precaution that uh, I recommend is to put a cargo strap between the center stand and the rear wheel so that it doesn't collapse forward. So let me get all that stuff done up and I'll show you how to get the forks off. They're pretty easy. There's a strap holding the stand back and there's a ratchet strap up to the rafters. That's some real shade tree mechanic stuff. I'm sure someone out there is going to see this and say, that's not the way to do it, all that sort of stuff. But you know, if it's a silly idea, but it works, maybe it's not a silly idea. First thing I like to do before I start on uh, front forks is to uh, loosen the top cap on them up here because once you take it out unless you have a specific vise to hold round objects if you put it in a regular vise like this and apply too much pressure you will collapse those tubes uh, you know oval them out so using the clamps that we have already on the bike there's a upper and a lower clamp let me see if we can see the lower clamp right there's a lower clamp I leave the lower clamp bolts tight and I loosen the upper clamp, which I already have done. And then you can either use a socket or a wrench and then loosen the top um, cap on here. This one happens to be six millimeter um, pinch bolt here, Allen wrench, and a 24 millimeter top cap. So now that those are loose, I've already done the other side. I am going to remove the front fender, the brakes, and the front wheel. So we'll see you back once that's done. Okay, before I get the wheel completely off, I'm gonna show you guys a little, guys and gals, a little trick here. Um, this uh, axle is, uh, you need a, a giant, Allen wrench for this. Most people probably don't have that in your regular sets. Now you can order one, buy one, whatever. They're not that expensive. But uh, if you uh, like to save a couple bucks, you can pick one of these things up at your local hardware store. These are about a dollar. This is, uh, I don't forget what it's called, but it's basically for putting uh, pieces of uh, threaded rod together. And this is a three quarter inch. I think I paid a dollar 25 for that. You put that on there and then a 19 millimeter wrench or socket. So that's a 19 millimeter um, Allen wrench. Just looks weird without the front end on there. Kind of looks like a insect or something. All right, so everything's ready to go. Um, I've already been tweaking on this thing a little bit, but I was gonna show another little 
tip. I like to try to loosen up these pinch bolts here, uh, really loose, and then get a large flat tip screwdriver and kind of pry this open when I'm wiggling these out, because sometimes they can be really tough to get out, especially if they've never been out before, like this one. I've already had it out a little bit. I put it back in to show y'all. And even now, I just turn it with one hand, but I can't get it out, so. With one, with one hand, you put the screwdriver tip in there, twist it a little bit to open that pinch area up, and then usually they'll come out. So let me get it out, and we'll put it up on the bench. Okay, before I like to uh, start working on it, I always like to back the preload out. That's uh, this one right here, 14 millimeters. Back that all the way out. And then also, I think this is the compression damping. I back that all the way out too. That's, uh, you'll feel clicks. I don't know if we'll be able to hear them audibly, but you can feel them when you turn it. So you back that all the way out. You'll know, because it won't, you don't want to force it. And then we're going to take the cap off. And that will be very easy since we've already loosened it. So we'll get that off. And then I am going to tip it upside down and drain it into my drain pan. Okay, I, I'm setting it down here because it's just a little bit easier for me anyway to work on it. And also I can show you, a lot of people are concerned that this thing has like massive spring pressure against it. It, it doesn't have massive spring pressure against this here. You can see here. I'm still in the, see. Now getting this cap off is another story, but to get to this point, it's not uh, not going to explode into your face. Our next step is going to be to remove this uh, upper cap here, and then after that, all this will come out, and then we'll be able to uh, get to the fork seal. But I have done a couple of these without a special tool, so it can be done. But I highly recommend you just go on Amazon, eBay, online, to your local motorsports store, whatever, and purchase one of these spring compressor tools. It's uh, not that expensive. If you're willing to jump in and do this yourself, you're going to be saving money anyway. For the cost of this tool, uh, you're going to be well ahead. I think I paid 25 bucks for this. I'm going to hook it up and show you how it works. Okay, so here's how I use this thing, uh, right, wrong, or otherwise. So you usually will have a collar. This one's plastic, a lot of them are metal and they have little holes in them. Uh, this tool has these threaded rods that are tapered. So you just screw them in until they're in there. I use a ratchet strap. I stuck another uh, old axle through here just to hold it. Crank it down until you can reach this nut. And let me get you in here, into the action here. You hold that nut, which I've already loosened it, and then this will come off. There you go. Now, this rod will come out of here as well. That's what your um, screw on there presses against that. We'll remove that right now. And we can remove that piece, which is just kind of a collar. And now we have to very carefully remove the tension on this and let this up. So I'll do that off camera. And if I'm not back, that means I got hit in the head and knocked the hell out. Okay, I'm gonna try to stay out of the way of the camera too much here so y'all can see what's going on. But at this point, I can remove the spring. Now, some of these you gotta pay attention. Like this one, see how the coils are wound tighter on the bottom than they are on the top, so that's directional. So it has to go in with that part on the bottom. Okay. And next, and I've already started this, but what you want to do is you want to pry your dust cap off of here. So I just use a screwdriver, go around here gently, and that'll just pry out and pry that down. And then inside of here is a snap ring. I don't know how well we're going to be able to see this. Oops. And I got this right over the top of the camera. There we go. Let's see. There's the snap ring right in there. 
and you just want to pry that out like that. Watch your eyes. All right, at this point, all you got to do, let me see if I can get you on the camera here, okay? All you got to do is just give this thing a little bit of a tug, and she'll pop apart. Hopefully I got that on there. And there's our new fork seal. Our fork bushings here. So at this point, I'm gonna to try to clean as much of this up as I possibly can, let it drip drain some more. We'll come back once I got her cleaned up. After you've cleaned everything, drained everything, you got it the way you want, you're ready to install your new seals. First thing you need to do is make sure that you have the correct ones. So I like to size them up next to the old ones. Then you also have to make sure you're installing it the correct order. Um, nothing more heartbreaking than getting your entire uh, fork assembled and then realizing that you didn't put on your dust seal. So we'll slide that on first here. Um, a little bit of WD-40 or a little bit of uh, silicone lube or even some new fork oil is always a good idea uh, when you're installing this sort of stuff. Now, I just slid that over there. The dust seal, not such a big deal, but um, the fork seals are. You want to be very careful with these. Now, if you look closely, let me bring you in here close. Look at that. Ooh, way close. This is where this uh, bushing goes. Yeah. So it's got a sharp edge there. Now, they sell a tool called a fork bullet that you can put over here. Um, it's not that expensive, so if you want, you can order one of those up. I have also used masking tape, and today I am going to try something I've never done before, and that is using a rubber glove. And we'll see if we can get the, the thumb to stretch over that. But what you're basically doing is you're providing a little bit of something to prevent that seal from catching those sharp edges. I guess if you had some like non-lubricated condoms, that would probably work too. They always say that they're useful to have in your uh, tool kit and survival kit. And uh, I don't know. I don't think uh, my wife would approve of it. All right. Let's try this. I've never done this before. Oh, it slides right on there. Easy day. I don't know how it's going to go over the rest of this. Okay. Well, I'll, uh, well let's see. It goes over it fine. Or I could just cut the rest of this glove, too, if I wanted to. Actually, that's exactly what I'm probably going to do. Just cut over here, because then I can use it on the other fork. All right, I got my bushings back on there. So first you have the dust seal, then the fork seal. Make sure you have that on the correct orientation. It can go on two different ways. So it's this... Uh, yeah, this side up because that's where the snap ring goes against that. Okay, then our big washer, our upper bushing, and then our lower bushing. Man, this thing is handy dandy. Okay, now we need to assemble this back into here. I'm gonna put a little bit of WD-40 in there too. Not gonna hurt anything. Little fork oil, like I said, silicone lube, whatever you like, just a little bit. Okay. Just feel the first bushing go in nicely. There we go. All right. Let's bring you down here. Let's bring you down here. There you go. Right in the action. Okay, so usually what I like to do is try to hold that. Um, washer up on the top here and then you can see if that lower bushing is going in every once in a while you get lucky and it'll kind of work itself in but that's pretty rare so now's where you have to start either using homemade tools or uh, specialty tools so I purchased and I this is the first time I've ever used this I purchased a tusk fork seal driver because I've always just used my little homemade tools for this before See how this works. And it has these uh, drivers that go over this. Two piece thing. Just 
kind of hold it together. And then you're supposed to just drive it straight down onto this thing on the bottom. And if we look in there, you can see that it's driven that bushing in there. Done a pretty decent job. And I think it's all the way. There we go. Okay. And now take this off. Put the fork seal down there. Double check that we have it oriented correctly again. Put our little driving tool over that again and drive that in. Hope this is making sense to y'all. There we go. That should be it. Okay. And then our snap ring goes on top of that. So we'll install the snap ring and then push the dust seal down. Okay. RTFM, read the freaking manual. So when it comes to filling this thing, you can read online different things here. Um, and it says it takes 485 uh, cubic centimeters or 16.4 ounces US Imperial 17.11 of suspension oil 01 or equivalent. Now that's Yamaha suspension 01. Um, that means uh, basically five weight oil. Now, if you like a little bit you want to mess around with your forks a little bit or you're a bigger boned individual you could go to seven weight or ten weight or whatever um, I'm probably gonna stick with the five weight now that that is not the most accurate way of measuring the oil especially since I did not completely disassemble this fork we didn't take the uh, damper rod out it didn't take everything apart so there's just gonna be a little bit of residual oil in there so the most accurate way to measure it is I'm going to fill up um, my little graduated cylinder with about that much, which is about half a liter. Slowly pour some in there, and then you measure the level. I don't know how well you can see this here, but what you're looking for is you fill it up, and then it should be 150 millimeters below this outside surface down to the level of the fluid in here. So you fill it up until the fluid is 150 milliliters down, or millimeters, 150 millimeters down. So how do you do that? Well, you can buy a special tool for that. It's not too expensive. Or uh, you can do as I have done in the past on this. A little crooked. I just like to use my giant syringe. Very handy to have in the garage. And I put a piece of clear tubing on there, a little bit longer than I need. And then I will measure up 150 millimeters. And usually what I just do is I put a hose clamp on it right there. Then I just rest the hose clamp on the edge of that fork, outside edge, and draw fluid. If it's drawing fluid, that means that we have too much in there. If it's not drawing fluid, I add a little bit more until this thing starts to draw fluid. And then once it no longer is drawing fluid, you are uh, down to 150 millimeters. So there you go. One thing I didn't mention, but it's in the manual. Uh, when you put fluid in here, you need to stroke your piston. So you should pull the damper rod, damper piston in and out about 10, 12 times. Because uh, that will, uh, there's air in there, it'll bring the fluid in. And if you don't do that, then one of your forks will feel funny. And also your fluid measurement will be incorrect. 
This one took almost exactly what the book said. I put about 400 and I put 450 in it and checked it. It was just a little bit low and I added a little bit more and it was right where it needed to be. So now we have to see if we can't get that spring back on here. All right, I'm gonna show you the way that I do this. Maybe there's an easier way, maybe there isn't. Now when you put this, uh, when you put this spring in here, you have to be careful because the damper rod's gonna go down. You need it to stay up. So what I do is I get whatever the smallest wrench that will fit over underneath this piece. You don't know how well you can see it in there. There you go. And that holds it up. And then what I do is I just turn the spring and it follows the ramp. See that? I'm using physics until it's going to get to a point where it's not going to be able to go anymore and you got to be careful it doesn't pop out of there because then you'll lose all your momentum but until you get this thing above the spring and then I just take my entire assembly that I removed off of here earlier and all you got to do is get it started okay now it's started. And then I gotta let this thing drop out. So you gotta do a little bit of prying. Maybe a little bit of crying. There you go. Just use physics. Perfect. Alright, and now we can use our um, tool we'll set it all up pull this down and then we can tighten this back on here but it's attached nothing's going anywhere now all right reinstalled I tightened the lower clamps up a little bit then um, torque down the cap and then make sure you look up the torque values on these um, it's important because if you over tighten these you can cause um, stiction in your forks which just means when the moving parts are uh, not moving the way they're supposed to so the next thing i'm going to do after i get the other one removed and replace the seals and install the new fluid is i'm going to install these shock socks which should prevent the issue that we had uh, riding through a lot of dirt and mud even dried bugs that sort of thing that crud gets on the outside of your fork leg, gets past the dust seal, gets up in there and chews up the fork seal, causing leakage. So these are, actually thinking about it, I should have bought the little bit longer ones that you have to install when you remove the forks. But these are nice because these are just Velcro. So they open up and then you just Wrap them around. Put my ugly head in the way here. There we go. And then the top one, just slide it up. Put that one around. Put it so you can read the cool logo. And that should prevent our problems. So now no dirt can get up on that top area and get up into there. And they're easily removable so you can clean them. All right, I'm gonna remove that other one and re rebuild it or whatever. Not really rebuild, reseal it. Put some new fluid in it and uh, we'll come back once we're reassembled. It's a good reason to have a cup holder on your bike so you can enjoy yourself a cold beverage after you're done working on it so if you uh, want to do your front forks don't be too afraid a couple of special tools will make it easy um, the biggest thing I'd be concerned about is you're taking your front wheel and your brakes and all that stuff off so make sure you double check triple check whatever go through and do a little uh, checklist whatever it takes and uh, make sure everything is back on there tight and torqued down in the distance there, you can see my next project. Spoiler alert. 
So we got it all done. And uh, fork seals are not expensive. Fork oil is not expensive. But uh, you take this in and have it done in the shop and it's gonna cost you a pretty penny. So knowing how to do it, you know, well, you gotta have a little bit of room and uh, some tools. It always feels good to be able to take care of things at home. And that way you know what's inside of there. Um, myself, I should have probably just ordered everything. Um, one of the bushings was marginal. So I put her back together. I'm gonna order up them bushings and probably on the next tire change, <laughs> I'm gonna end up pulling the forks out again just to swap out that bushing because I'd rather not have it wear. And uh, once the tire's off, that's about half the job anyway. So, cheers. Set that down. If you're liking what I'm putting out, give me that thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. And if you're not already a subscriber, please consider doing so. I'd appreciate it. I like it. My channel's growing. Um, and I hope to continue putting out some different stuff here. So, hey. Throw something down in the comments. Let me know what you want to see me work on. If I can find it, I will see if I can get it and fix it up. What the heck? Why not? Thank you very much for watching. Get out there and find your adventure. Adios.